Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter five talking about improving the testing process and as a part of this tutorial, we are continuing ahead with 5.3, improving the test process itself. But here, of course, we are not just trying to elaborate the basic introduction, but we are going to talk something more interesting, which is very important for any individual to understand about the test process. In order to get started, this particular segment will be talking about the architecture of deploying an improvement process within the organization. That what exactly it takes to start with the improvement process within the organization and what kind of steps can actually be followed in order to implement and make it successful changes or improvements to your test process altogether. But before that, a quick review on the different steps which we are actually having as different models which we can make use of. So here we are also trying to elaborate that how different models can cater you at what point of time, which can definitely be helpful at any point of time for you to identify and deploy any particular model in your organization towards the improvement steps. Now, the IT industry can work with the test process improvement models to reach a higher level of maturity and professionalism. Industry standard models are helping to develop a cross organization matrix and measures that can be used for the comparison. I think we do know about a lot of things in the matrices that there are certain matrices which are available which can help you to compare your process uh, utilization or process uh, effectiveness at any point of time to determine if that process is still beneficial for you or it would need some changes to be done in order to meet the expectation. So out of the need of the process improvement in the testing industry, several set of recommended process have been materialized. These include STEP, TMMI, TPI Next, and CTP. The stacked models such as TMMI and CMMI provide standards for comparison across different companies and organization. I'm not sure if you're working in an organization right now uh, you do know about the organization process maturity model that if your organization is following CMMI, you, you may be working with a CMM level four or CMM level five company. But sometimes it is also possible that maybe you are an experienced person but working with a startup organization and they are not even CMM level two or one. So that means they are yet to go ahead and implement a process and have a fixed or determined process to be used for the project. So these are some of the tagged models like the test maturity model integration and capability maturity model integration as TMMI and CMMI, which helps you to compare the organization based on the different levels. And we have five level here, which we'll be talking in the upcoming tutorials in detail. Uh, and the, on the other hand, the continuous models such as CTP, STEP, and TPI Next basically allow an organization to address its highest priority issues with more freedom in order of implementations. Now, these are each discussed in the section below. That means as we will be going ahead, we'll be talking about each of them one after the other. All of these models allow an organization to determine where it stands in terms of the current test process maturity. Once an assessment is performed, TMMI and TPI Next suggest a roadmap for improving the test process. Now that's where something you need to be careful about, that how you can actually differentiate between these models in order to tell uh, somebody in your organization that what kind of models will be the best recommended when it comes to determining where exactly your process needs to be modified or changed. So TMMI and TPI Next are the models which basically will help you from the point of determining a roadmap in order to improvise your test process. But on the other hand, the STEP and CTP will provide the organization with means to determine where its general process improvement return on investment will come from. That means which typical area will give you the highest advantages or better returns on whatever you're going to do right now from the point of 
fulfilling the need of the process improvement and leave it to the organization to select the appropriate roadmap. So as you see that there are certain variations, but I just want to leave you at this point of time with a question mark that what exactly TPI next is, what is step, how does it really help us to uh, determine the roadmap and help you to determine the selection of the uh, improvement steps or improvement places in your process because we are going to talk about it in the upcoming tutorials in much more detailed way. <clears throat> Well, further to add, of course, we are just talking about another important thing, which is called as ideal model. Now, what exactly ideal model is all about? So, of course, once it has been agreed that the test process is going to be helpful in terms of like determining, uh, you know, should be reviewed and improved. So your organization can always determine that what exactly is the need of uh, improvement. And uh, you should first decide that are you ready for doing an improvement to your process or not. So once it has been agreed that the test process should be reviewed and improved, the test process improvement implementation steps should be adopted for this activity and could be defined as the ideal model. Now what is ideal model? It basically is an acronym of five standard steps which you basically follow. So I stands for initiating the improvement process, D stands for diagnosing the current situation, E stands for establishing a test process improvement plan, A stands for acting to implement the improvement, and L stands for learning from the improvement program. Now what exactly these things are? For example, if I talk about the very first one here, that is initiating uh, the improvement process. Of course, we do understand that, first of all, we need to get geared up that what is that you want to do? And how would you do that? Is there a way you can actually gather all the information? Are there any kind of references? So before the process improvement activities can actually start, the objectives, goals, scope of coverage of the process improvement has to be agreed on and by the stakeholders. The choice of the process improvement model is also made at this time that are we going to follow the uh, CTP step TMMI or TPI next or what because these will give you a standard guideline to uh, align your process with and uh, as far as you have a reference with you you can actually go ahead with that really well otherwise you may have to you know just do something of your own which might not be giving you the right output or maybe the right ROI what you're looking for. The model can be anything which you have selected and definitely go about that. But of course, here the point is to determine the goal that what exactly you're doing, why are you doing, what could be your objective and what kind of scope and coverages you are looking forward to. On the other hand, diagnosing the current situation basically stands for the agreed assessment approach which is undertaken and the test assessments report is created which contains an appraisal of current testing practices and a list of possible process improvements. So diagnosing, as you say that, you know, diagnosing the current situation is uh, finding out the root causes or the areas which needs improvement. So you basically conduct an assessment throughout your process after determining your goals. And here you do create an assessment report which will share, uh, share that information with you that which areas need improvements with different priority levels so that you can basically select which part uh, needs to be prioritized and will be done as a part of this particular cycle. On the other hand, establishing a test process improvement plan, of course, to set up and lay out a plan and roadmap which would be required for you to follow in order to do that. Like, how would you do it? That's the answer what you're giving here. So the list of possible process improvement is prioritized after the assessment report is collected and the prioritization could be based on the return on investment that which can give us the better returns on investment uh, because that's the end goal what you're actually looking at at the end of the day or there are many other factors in fact not just ROI you can say risk alignment with organization strategy measurable quantitative or qualitative benefits and having established this priority order a plan for the delivery of the these improvements is followed developed after that so of course your plan is now layout let's see what exactly is the next thing that is acting upon this plan so acting to implement the improvement here the test process improvement plan for the delivery of the improvement is implemented finally the could should be this could include any training or mentoring required in order to tell your people that how we are going to do it probably it is from the point of people who are not having the effectiveness in order to do certain activities then you give them you know proper training ramp up or mentor mentoring so that 
they can understand what we are trying to do as the improvement part and uh, also piloting of processes and ultimately their full deployment will be done here in the last stage learning from the improvement program of course no matter you had a great plan you had great models to be followed but you always at the end of the day collect the necessary lessons learned items to see that if our improvements were effective or not because if in case it was not effective the next cycle you would look for something more to be done or probably the other areas to be concentrated in order to improvise your test process and meet your expectation so that's where learning from the improvement programs deals with having fully deployed the process improvement it is essential to verify which benefits you will or were basically received now it also importantly check us or it is also important to check which of the success criteria for the process improvement activity have been met because not always possible that when you take certain actions in order to do that job does it, it does meet the expectation or meets your end goals and uh, fulfills your need and expectation so one last thing here of course depending on the process model used this stage of the process is where monitoring of the next level of maturity starts now and decision is made to either start the improvement process again or to stop the activity at this point so of course the, depending on the different model which you will see in the upcoming tutorials the last stage that is learning from the improvement program will <clears throat> basically determine that if you want to start somewhere or you need to you know stop this activity at this point or not so there are a lot of things which you will be actually exploring when you work in a real-time industry so you can actually go back to your organization and uh, try to you know probably speak to your um, you know process maturity team who will be taking care of these kind of things so if you have cmmi or any other model um, you know being implemented at organization level do have a word with them to understand a better thing that how exactly this is practical practically done in their way because of course each organization is different in their own way of working on it and deploying certain practices in order to improvise well that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning